Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with PDQ.com. It's past Tuesday again, September. So what is that, the, the ninth? Ninth one of these for the year? There's there's not a lot new. It always happens. It comes around. Uh, August was the worst we've seen in, in my opinion, years. And uh, September is not quite as bad. Uh, take with that what you want. I don't think it's a good one either. There's half as many total exploits closed. Uh, 63 instead of the, what, 120-something that we had last week. And there's only five critical. Uh, the problem is, is two of those criticals are pretty horrific. We'll dive into those in just a bit. And then there's also two that are already known out in the public and one that's being actively exploited. So while not as many critical and not as many total CVEs that are being closed, some of the ones are, are really bad. Uh, if you are using IPSEC in your environment, uh, patch now. Stop listening to me. Just go patch. If you're not, you know, let's, let's talk about it for a while. There's some stuff there, but uh, we'll be just fine. First one we want to cover, the first exploit, is CVE-2022-34718. Uh, and this is a TCP IP, Remote Connection Vulnerability. Got it. you think that word would be uh, something I could handle by now, but I still struggle. Uh, and this one is using, if they have IPSEC enabled, they can run remotely with little complexity, no user uh, interaction or no privileges required. They can run code against your environment. I think the only reason that's not a 10.0 and considered completely wormable and uh, zero day is the fact that it requires IPSEC, which isn't used everywhere. Uh, other than that, this one's about as bad as it gets. So that's why if you are using IPSEC, uh, take a look at this as soon as possible. The next one uh, we're going to look at is uh, 2022 34721. This one is a lot of the same things. The only real difference is it uses the internet key exchange instead of uh, TCP IP. Uh, if you have version one enabled, everything's at risk. If you uh, if you have version 2 enabled, only your servers are at risk, but either way, it's still bad. It's still network accessible, low complexity, no user interaction, and uh, no no sort of uh, pr privileges required. Uh, those are both really bad, and that's, that's kind of as bad as you can get without it being a full zero day. So uh, bad time to have IPSEC. If you do, look at patching sooner than later. Obviously, still want to do testing. Uh, as far as the one that is already out there and already exploited, this one is the common log file system driver and is an elevation of privilege. Basically, if they have access to your machine, so they have to be local and they have to have some privileges, but they can uh, use this to run as the system, which is basically gives them full admin. They can do a lot to your environment in that way. So that one's only 7.8. Uh, I don't think it'd even be one that would get listed if it wasn't already being exploited, just because there's so many, like how often do they have local access like that with privileges? But if they do, it's still it's still something you want to pass just because, I mean, if they can run a system, they could do a lot of really bad things to you. And that's kind of it for the highlights. This just, uh, boy, like I said, not as not as many on the on just the total count, but the ones that are there are bad. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to the early year where we have, you know, one or two critical, and those are only critical because they feel like they need to have them. Those are nice. I want those. Uh, this is where I'm supposed to do my thumbnail pose, but, you know, they're not my supervisor. I do what I want. 